Hello, my name is Kellen Buerta, and I am a research consultant at ILGA World. Today I will tell you about our newest research report. Our Identities Under Arrest is a global overview of how laws which criminalize consensual same-sex sexual acts and diverse gender expressions are enforced. This report aims to fill some of the gaps which our publications, such as the state-sponsored homophobia report, could not delve into deeply. Through desktop research and engaging with activists on the ground, this new report provides member organizations, the media, academics, and those working on cases of refugee law or decriminalization advocacy, with hundreds of examples of enforcement across the last two decades from all around the world. In all, we have compiled over 900 examples of enforcement from 72 jurisdictions, with 44 of those countries enforcing laws within the last three years alone. Hi, I'm Lucas Ramon Mendoz and I am ILGA World's Research Coordinator. So why a report of this nature? While we at ILGA World remain committed to our ongoing monitoring of legislative events, this report focuses on enforcement. In other words, how criminalizing states actually arrest, detain, prosecute, and sentence people based on provisions that criminalize consensual same-sex sexual acts or diverse gender expressions. Several United Nations delegations have in the past argued that these laws are dormant or that they are held back by some sort of moratorium. Well, these justifications have also been used as reasons not to pursue the repeal of these provisions. And in receiving states, these arguments are used to send LGBT asylum seekers back to criminalizing countries. To give you just a small taste of what can be found in this new report, allow us to briefly touch on some of our main findings. For one thing, there is strong indication that arrests and prosecutions are considerably underreported. For those reasons, the cases we know about are but the tip of the proverbial iceberg. We know, however, that consensual same-sex sexual acts continue to be punished with fines, imprisonment, corporal punishment and possibly even the death penalty in several countries. Levels of enforcement within each country can vary greatly in frequency and intensity on short notice. Countries, once considered safe, may suddenly find themselves with an overall increase in arrests. For example, while those that once had moratoria against the arresting of our community members may easily revert them. The total number of judicial prosecutions is a bad indicator, however, to measure the extent to which laws are applied in practice, since the judiciary intervenes in a relatively low number of instances, compared to the number of arrests and detentions, which can extend for several weeks or even months without any judicial control. Gender expression tends to play a key role in numerous instances of enforcement. In countries where non-normative behavior is largely read as evidence of non-heterosexuality. The way a person looks, dresses or talks can be seen as indicative of probable criminal activity, and that many times can be enough to warrant an arrest. On top of that, binary and essentialist notions of gender make trans and gender diverse people prone to be targeted for so-called same-sex sexual acts. Therefore, it is far more likely for anyone to be targeted for their appearance or mannerisms than for any verifiable illicit activity. We know that the media can play an important role in how states enforce their criminalizing provisions. We know that mainstream and social media can inform us about instances of enforcement, but many times they also contribute to aggravate the situation. Certain methods of arrest appear to be common across regions, and these include entrapment by state agents via dating apps, raids on known or suspected hangouts or the homes of same-sex couples, and even arresting people when they are trying to report violence they've suffered. Further, certain forms of evidence are commonly used 
to arrest and charge people across multiple regions. The standard for this evidence also remains incredibly low, especially for arrests. With the long debunked practice of anal examinations or confessions forced by torture remaining all too common. Police abuse and mistreatment of detainees appears to be present in almost all documented instances of enforcement. A person's economic status can also play a key role in evading enforcement, with those engaged in sex work or living in poverty being far more likely to face targeting and arrest. Of course, this is just a tip of the iceberg and we encourage you to check out our report to learn more about these issues and others. Of course, a report of this nature can never be comprehensive as many, many cases go unreported. Actually, in many countries, formal records are actually inaccessible, sometimes inexistent. But these laws always have an effect. Time and again, we have seen how the mere existence of such provisions allow law enforcement to act with impunity. We hope this report will be of immense value to you. It certainly has been for us at Ilga World. Whether you are a human rights defender, a lawyer, asylum seeker, politician, journalist, a student, or a researcher, we hope that you will take this document and run with it. It is but one piece of a much larger effort at the global, regional and grassroots levels to ensure the safe, dignified and free future for all persons of diverse sexual orientations, gender identities and expressions. To access our report, go to our website at ilga.org. Find the homepage tab called Resources and select our identities under arrest.